Alright guys, welcome back to the most amazing gaming channel in the world. Today we're going to be going over the Smite, well, 3.22 PTS patch notes. Now this is the PTS, obviously you guys know it can change, it's Fafnir's Wonderland. Um, I was able to play a match of it and I gotta say, Fafnir's Wonderland is amazing. I've loved it, it was a lot of fun. Though, in the middle of recording when the file got corrupted and like crashed everything, it was unfortunate. But... Let's get on into this. So there's some new god skins. I gotta say, the only one I'm really stoked for is the uh, Captain. And don't blink, here. because once you do, you'll be fast asleep. Holy shit, that was loud. Did not think it would be that loud. But uh, Captain Quick Mercury, I'm super stoked for him. Barbarian Thor is eh. Hail to the King is eh. Snowman Geb, I'm super super happy about this one. I'm gonna be picking this up no matter what. They could charge 600 for this. I'll buy it. Fast or festive Ratatosker. Ah. Uh, I mean, it's kind of cool, but I think they're kind of blowing off or going off of the uh, Ragnarok or not Ragnarok, uh, Fenrir festivities, festive Fenrir. Slay Bills Kyren, eh, I mean, it's kind of cool, but I don't know. Some mastery skins, yada, 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 achievements, all that fun stuff. This is the uh, Fafnir's Wonderland. There's 15 new on easy, and then you get to go on to the extra, and they said that you'll need to like five man queue to actually get in and have like communications. Otherwise, you get screwed. Um, so now the thing is it actually matter. The item changes. Odysseus's bow, um, reduced the cost from 2450 to 2100 and the passive, they reduced the physical power from 50 to 30%. I think this is a really good item. I mean, I'll, this is, or a good change. It was very, it was a good item, but for the rest of the tree, you have 1700 and then you have to dedicate another for I Ikeville, and then you have to put another 750. Like this you, you ended up being a late game item. And, and the fact that they said they wanted to change this so that it could be more focused towards early game for lane clear and things like that, I think this is a very good change. Dropping it down to that much, this will make me save up and not necessarily always get Ikeville because I might go Oboe now because I'll still get the 40%, so I'll get twice as much um, or 10% more attack speed, but the passive on that's going to be nice. So this is definitely a good change. Poison Star, it's irrelevant. It's still irrelevant. Like, they need to increase... I personally, I think they just need to increase the percent... 15% crit chance isn't worth it. Like, if you're going to have 15% crit chance, you need to increase this to, like, 50, 50 or 60 if you really want it to have a payoff. Changing it to 40, that doesn't do much. And the fact that it takes up an item where you could have dedicated that towards something like Rage, which is going to give you actually more of a chance of crit and be more, like, better in 95% of the builds out there. Like, I understand they want, don't want this to be used by everyone, but really the amount of people that can use this are maybe um, Artemis, maybe Hoonbots. Besides that, though, it's I, I, this still needs a buff. I've I never picked this up unless I'm really trying to troll someone. Um, God changes. Bologna is now getting a buff slash nerf. Um, basically, they realized that a lot of people, if they picked up Bologna, all you'd have to do is pick up something like, um, you know, a Tear or a Hercules, and it would completely counter Bologna. As soon as she'd start her bludgeon, you'd knock it out, and then she has no lane clear. So the fact that they increased that to 12 seconds, I think they should have left that the same, because the only thing that they're actually increasing now is, or making her better on, is the Scourge cooldown. Um, the damage doesn't go up at all. All it does is reduce the cooldown. Early game increases it, but you need to level it up three times before you even get it. 90% of the time, you're still going to be upgrading bludgeons. So this, this I don't think was the right change. If you wanted to make her better, you should have, I, I don't know, keep this the same at 10 seconds. So at least allow some sort of play style change. Um, and then go into Scourge. Like, I don't know. I think, I think this is a good change right here. Um, it's for, focused more on leveling this up first now, but increasing bludgeon I still think is a bad idea. Um, damage didn't really need to be changed because this is still super strong. Uh, Fenrir now, I think this is a big change. Whenever I'd play him, and I know my build's a little outdated, but you'd go into what? Your three, your one, your three, your one, your ult, your three. You'd never go into the two because for 15% lifesteal and... I mean, that, that was essentially it. I mean, I think you also get like a power bonus, a small one, but it was never something you'd upgrade because your three and your one did so much more. The fact they increase this, you might actually go into your three, your one, your three, your two, and then your ult because this will give you sustain. The fact you'll get 30% lifesteal, I think this is a really, really good change on Fenrir to at least 
be able to see seething hell uh used i mean this was never picked up until like what 12 ish probably around there i think like level 12 or 13 it's crazy so i think this is good to be able to at least see seething hell be used because it was essentially a useless skill for the first half of the game uh izanami basically they were i i think this is stupid they increased their base damage and then they increased her attack damage obviously these people I, I i don't know what do you not play your game do you not understand she's a hyper carry like late game she is fucking scary to go up against and the fact that they're going to increase her damage all across the board um because this increases her base damage um at level one this is going to increase the damage every single level and i mean it doesn't seem like much but you basically add 0.35 damage every single level and you times that by what 20 it adds up like you know it's <sighs> yes i understand they were saying that they want her basic attack damage increased because her auto attack is hard to use but you never you use that for like link you never really go into fights without like you use your one on that you're i don't know bad change i think this is a bad change uh mercury i think this is awesome they're increasing the movement speed which doesn't seem like much but this actually will make a pretty good difference this though i think is a huge change as well um he's now the fastest god by one speed because vimana and oh there was one other god that had a faster or a 380 uh movement speed i'm spacing but one was vimana the big baby but this this is huge because one of the downsides is all you'd have to do is curse Mercury and you'd be fine. And he'd have to either counter sprint it or that was it. And when you cl would curse him, he would lose out on his damage. So the fact that now you can use your two, which has been buffed um, on the duration and everything, it now cleanses slows and makes you immune to new slows. That is is amazing and this could actually maybe bring mercury back in i don't want to say into the meta but because other gods are st still going to have the lane clear um but this is huge i think this is a, a good step in the right direction to getting mercury back into the meta um sasano fixed a issue where his first part of his skill could miss i mean not a big change that's just graphics so that you actually know it went off and thoth tote this i think is amazing I started playing them actually on the live client and I was going to be putting out a new build because I was like, they're the one I'm using. I just could not do it. And I was like, really? He's good. I think the biggest change they should change would be his re like reduce the cooldown as two because this 18 seconds is ridiculous. And even with 40% cooldown, I'm still at like 12 seconds. And that's like my only thing. I have no way. And yes, he is a bursty mage, but all you need is the slightest bit of CC and you were dead. So I'm like this, I think, that, that's what I thought needed to be changed. So when I, th I came on, I saw patch notes, and I saw this. This tickled me pink. The fact that this will now be on 12 seconds, and you add a 40% cooldown, that means you're going to have this essentially every 8 seconds. It's amazing now. That goes 8 from 18. 8 to 12, even. That extra 4 seconds is huge. And I am super, super a fan of this. So I think this is a, an amazing change. Thoth, I think, yes, his ult is very good, but now that people have been able to play with him, it's easily avoidable. You can Aegis it, and, I mean, if you hit it, oh, yeah, it does a shit ton of damage. But that's an if you hit it. And against actual players that have a decent common sense of the game, you can avoid it almost every time. So I think Thoth, good change. Very good change, I think. This, I think, is a good change, too. Shitty change here, good change here. Eh, I'm kind of indifferent. I, I think this is a bad change. This is a good change. So, eh. I think this is still shit. There, this doesn't do anything. And Odysseus Bow, I think, is awesome. So, not much on the patch notes, guys. But, yes. I think, overall, they're doing a pretty good idea. But I think they focus more on skins and uh, Fafnir's Wonderland right here. So, anyways, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next time, have yourself a fucking amazing life.